Well, hello everyone and welcome to this very special episode of the Level Gap Podcast. And as usual, when the boss is away, the children will go play on this very special Gen Con Week episode featuring me, Level 99 Games, and all things otherwise. Welcome back to the Level Cap Podcast, where we usually talk about Level 99 games, things, and otherwise, with me, your host, Marco DeSantos, also known as Mechanic Critic. And with me, usually, is my awesome co-host and also CEO overlord of Level 99 games, Brad Talton himself. Sadly, the boss is away for a Gen Con week. So, instead, we have the next best thing. Underlord of level 99 games, Josh A3 himself. Say hi, Josh. Hey, everybody. Sorry you got me this week, but I guess it's about time I'm on the podcast anyway. Yeah. Hey, hey, don't, don't, don't put yourself down, Josh. It's, you're great. I mean, like, I've actually been meaning to have you, like, forever. It's just that we never seem to have the same waking up time because you're usually only up when it's like lunch time for me sure yeah it's a bit hard to you know get schedules in sync yeah which is kind of weird since you and brad literally literally share a time zone so hmm. Mm -hmm. yeah maybe maybe your schedule's just a bit different from he wakes up earlier than i do that's pretty much it oh he wakes up earlier yeah well and I'm, i'm not able to record at my house right now so i would have to like wake up at seven and then go into work and i don't know if brad would appreciate me being there that early oh wait why can't you record at your house is something wrong at your house uh, not nothing wrong there's just a baby at my house and that causes recording issues on occasion i understand yeah babies can be a problem for literally everything mm. babies ruining everything gosh do babies ruin everything josh uh, it seems fine so far. I haven't had anything ruined yet. Not yet. All right. Wait, is it, whose baby is it? Oh, uh, my housemate's, uh, uh, Chad's. It's not mine. Oh, okay. Uh, oh, so I'm starting to put together the lore between you, Brad, and Chad now. And I'm starting to understand. So, so, so when you say that your housemate is Chad, it means that you're with Chad programmer guy chad correct i currently live with him in his house all right but i am assuming you're not married to chad no unfortunately i'm not yeah chad sounds like a pretty cool guy you sound like a pretty cool guy so that's interesting i i'm starting to put together the lore of of albuquerque new mexico in my head Mm -hmm. so that's put that in your lore bible everyone okay so we have a wonderful docket for all of you tonight today i don't know is it is it night or day where you are right now it's about 6 p.m so evening getting into it all right oh so in, in new mexico is it like is the sun going down at 6, or is it no, like it's already still, down? No, it's still in the sky. It's like 100 degrees. Still. Oh, Yeah. okay. This is actually about the hottest time of the day. Are you serious? It's not yeah. lunchtime? No, it's it's usually around now. I guess because of where my window is facing. But, ah, I yeah. see. Wait, 100 degrees Fahrenheit is... How many is that in Celsius? 100 F to C. 37 degrees is a lot, but only if there's a lot of humidity. Where I'm from, 37 is like, it's, an, it's a hot day because, well, yeah, I'm all, I live on a tropical island, so it's like maximum humidity. You yeah, know? that must be awful. I don't know. Oh, it's you. okay. Uh, no, actually, the thing about it is that if you're born on a tropical island, you, you're you born used to that kind of weather, right? So, like, unlike you guys in temperate climates, wherein the, your weather changes basically four times a year, uh, we just have one kind of weather, so it's the only weather we have, I think. Mm, that's so, fair. Yeah, so I'm used to it. I wear jackets during that kind of weather. 
Huh. Yeah. Uh, but to be fair, among my peers, I am still considered the oddball for wearing a jacket in that kind of weather. But just goes to show how adaptable the human body is to adverse conditions. Which is why I'm going to put you through a gauntlet of very, very special things today, listener. Because you can handle it. Today, we're going to be talking about a lot of cool level 99 games things. We're going to have great docket. We're going to be talking about some games we've been playing. We're going to be talking about a special certain game that all of you might be interested to learn about. Because Brad has never talked about it on the podcast uh, in length. And then we're going to be also answering some of the questions you guys have for us. So without further ado, let's start with the first segment called What Have We Been Doing? So Josh, as customary for this segment, I want to ask all of you, what have you been doing this week? Uh, well, it's the start of the new week, so not too much yet. But uh, I'm basically shipping out organized play prizes for spring season. We just got those in over the weekend. Ooh. So all day has just been printing envelopes and putting things in envelopes. But uh, envelopes, for, mm, yeah. Oh my gosh, yeah. yeah I, yeah. I'm. So are you the one who packages? Oh yeah, them? yeah. Yeah. yeah for the, for oh, those no. who don't know, I'm a. Uh, my official title is production manager, which means I put games together and send them to press. So I yell one to give me stuff, and then I put the stuff together. Um, but. Uh, since that's not enough for Brad, I also do customer service and testing and design and basically everything that Brad doesn't want to do. So, uh, seeing as I do customer service, I also handle shipping for organized play and things like that. Oh, okay. That sounds like a lot of work. It, it, work is work. It's fine. You know, I mean, today was just running back and forth between my computer and my printer, you know, printing out hundreds of envelopes. And then, you know, sleeving prize cards and putting them in envelopes. So it was pretty, pretty nice, you know, easy, methodical work, just time consuming, and tedious. Yeah, like playing Yu-Gi-Oh! or other children's card games. Yeah, I, I guess it's kind of, kind of Yu-Gi-Oh! in that you put a lot of cards in a small space, I suppose. But yeah, I don't have to deal yeah. with any ridiculous rules or, you know, my envelopes changing halfway through prize shipping or anything like that that's gonna be great like what if what if real life was just like Yu-Gi-Oh and the rules basically changed whenever the heck that'd be awful like <laughs> nobody would have a handle on anything unless you had somebody that knew what the changes were going to be no unless you were obviously the main character therefore the changes always were in your favor sure right? yeah of course yeah, of course, right? So, like, imagine your envelopes. You go like you go to insert a card, and suddenly it doesn't fit in the envelope anymore because I've changed the dimensions of the envelope. Hmm. You know, it's yeah, it's pretty dumb. So, uh, is okay, Josh. Usually, when somebody's on this podcast and I ask this question, they usually talk about things that aren't work because um, usually what you're working on tends to be the thing for the next segment. Which is why I always tell people to never talk about work for this segment. Because my goodness, we're trying to get people excited and work doesn't excite people. Oh, so, I love work. Works, talking about work's the best. Like, oh, I mean, gosh. especially, I mean, Brad's job, I'm sure he can't talk about a lot of things he's doing because it's about future projects that we're not really to talk about. But my job is mainly current stuff. So everything I'm doing is stuff that everyone probably already knows about. Yes, but... Let's let's break Josh the production guy into into Josh the guy. You know, like what do you do? What what do you do for fun? <laughs> like that's what people want to know. You're you're a funny guy. You think I have time for things like that? You think I understand oh, no. the definition? What that word means? Um, no, you know, I I actually have a pretty like strict schedule of doing things. Like my days are work and my nights are more work. And when my nights are not work, I usually, uh, I do a lot of role-playing games, uh, D&D 5th Edition, Monsters, uh, let's see. Monster of the Week or Monsters? It's uh, Monsters and Other Childish Things. Uh, I'm also in a Pokemon Tabletop Adventures game right now as well. So I'm in like two or three role-playing games throughout the week. That's yeah. so fun. Yeah, that it's, fun. it's fun. See, that's it's, fun. It's different from work, you know, that 
you know, it's not a board game. I do play board games not for work, but that kind of just translates back into work also because it's market research. Exactly. I mean, like at the end of the day, right? I, I work for level 99 games, but it's like I play video games more than 90% of my free time. Mm. Um, mostly because I have no real life friends and um, it's hard putting together enough people to play board games. It's just as simple as that, right? Like, oh, fair. whatever. I'd love to play yeah. more of like video games, computer games, but I haven't really found time to. I've been playing Gungeon when I can lately because of the new update, so that's been fun. Yeah, uh, Gungeons and Dragons, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, it sounds sounds pretty fun. I actually need to check it out. I heard it's free, so I mean, you know, it's speaking my language. Uh, so wait, are you usually the DM or are you usually a player? I'm usually a player. I used to DM for a long time, but I've been playing more often because I like making characters, and a lot of the groups I'm in, thankfully, are very into role playing. So, you know, it's less rolling dice and more talking, which is fun. Oh man, role playing groups. Like, I wish I got like a set of players that actually I, I DM. So, I wish I my players would freaking role play because it's usually just like, you know, I stab the NPC. Why? I don't know. I just stab the NPC. That's what you do in these yeah, games, yeah. right? And you just roll dice and hit things with swords. Uh, but that's that. It's a role playing game. I know. <laughs> it's 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 you know some people like comp. I, that's fine. I mean, fortunately for myself, I like role. The people I'm with also like role. Um, I actually spent uh, one of my characters died recently, and I uh, put a lot of investment into my new character. Like, I went out and bought a pair of like fake non-prescription lenses and like printed out business cards that my character gives out to like other players when they meet them and stuff like that. So it's you know, I've, I kind of went the whole nine yards with this new character I'm working on. Oh. I was about to ask, like, can you name, like, an interesting character you've made? Uh, that sounds pretty interesting. Um, yeah, I mean, that's, that's, like, my mind most lately. Um, she's kind of an, I, uh, you know, iconoclast, like, it's, it's for the D&D, &D, and she's very against, like, deities and whatnot. It's, it's a long story, but, you know, she's kind of an wow. iconoclast, anarch kind of, and she doesn't like that. A lot of these deities are just dudes that got good, and they just have say in in everything. So she's kind of like trying to take the man down. And it's it's a long road to I that. See. Is she is she is she wearing like leather and spikes and has boots? No, 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 nothing like that. She's she's more of a traditional like wizardy looking character with like glasses and like a cape and whatnot. You know, she sounds like a nerd. Kind of, yeah, yeah. She's pretty nerdy. Yeah, I think I think that's pretty cool. I mean, okay, so when you say you like making characters, you really like making like the lore parts and all that jazz. Okay. Yeah, I, I like making them and I like you know acting them out. I took you know theater for four years in college and I worked in the theater department for like six years after that. Oh geez. So I'm I'm kind of like I don't like stage act, but I do like you know role playing and whatnot. So. It, Oh, kind of okay. So, out okay. Josh, the actor, the actor. That's what you are. All right. Okay. So see, now I'm putting together the lore for you. I have preconceived notions of everyone in the level 99 games family. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. So I, I didn't have one for you aside from the guy who does customer service and production stuff. I was going to say, what did you think I was and... like before you asked me these questions? I mean, it was that and weeb stuff. I okay. mean, that's all yeah, that's, I that's knew fair. about you. Yeah, like, you know, you did production, you did customer service, and then you were kind of a weeb. And you have, like, an assortment of waifus, I bet. Uh, sure. Um, yeah, it's That's not wrong, sure. right? No, no, yeah, no, it's not, you're wrong. not wrong. Exactly, exactly. So now I have a more fleshed out version of you in my head. Um, you know, when I say, I find that to be very interesting, because when I say I make interesting characters, like, if you asked me the same question I asked you, like, my answer would be wholly different from yours. Because you started going into backstory and stuff. Like, I just, like, I make characters as one-liners. Like, when I say them and, like, try to encompass their character in one line. Um, like, that's the entire gimmick of that character. Like, if you asked me that question, I'd probably go, like, you know, I made a wizard who is not actually a wizard. Because he's just a rogue who uses deception to make people think he's a wizard. And, like, when he stabs people, he makes people think it's a magic hmm. or something like that. Or, like, I go, like, 
Um, I made a guy who's blind but uses Find Familiar as a seeing eye dog. I mean, like, that's it. I mean, that's fine. Like, you know, having just a basic concept is, is good enough. You know, a lot of, you know, it's it's about developing characters you play too, right? Uh, that's fair. Yeah. You know, I if like your that. character is all done when you made them, you know, there'd be, there'd be no point in playing the game. Yeah, what's the point, right? What's the point? Mm-hmm. Hmm. I guess that's that. I guess that is the point. All right. So that's a little bit about Josh. A little about his life. A little bit what he does. But more than that, let's move on to the pipeline, where the level ninety nine game person I'm with usually talks about their job. Uh, but this time it's not going to be boring. It's going to be about something you guys probably are very interested in hearing. So Josh, please reveal your dark secrets. Well, let's see. I mean, you told me not to talk about my job, but. And then you're tell- oh. talk about things that are related to. I mean, don't what- talk about your job in the first segment. Talk mm. about your job in the second segment. Got it. Okay. Right? Yeah. Yeah. See. So, would you like me to talk about like State-based. what I do in general, or what I've been doing recently, or? All right. So you can do a little bit of both. You know, okay. um, spend a few minutes or like half a minute or something talking about in general and then something you've been doing recently because i'm assuming that means it's news and people are excited for news uh it's a bit of news but uh you know i kind of glance you know briefly went over what i do earlier you know i i put games together and i send them to press it's it's a job it's basically just an entry and dropping yeah. around the okay. cards and you know yelling at you know, Brad to give me stuff, and Laura to give me stuff, and Bob give me stuff, and whatnot. And so, that's the least less exciting part of the job. Um, oh, so so you make the cards? You essentially like make the final cards for printing them? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm I'm the the kind of the gatekeeper between an unfinished game and what you see on the shelf. That also means that likely if there's a problem, you can blame me for it since I'm the last person. So to all the rule everything. book all the rule book problems are your fault. All the and rule all book the problems are my fault in that I'm the last fault. person to read the book before it goes off to press. So it is your fault. I a lot of times like I I try to have as much of a handle on a game as possible. So, you know, I of course play every game that we make. And I try to involve in playtesting, you know, when I can. But, you know, occasionally, you know, things will happen where maybe I'm not... Like, let's take Temporal Odyssey, for example, because that just went... This, that just came out. Uh, you can get it right now on the level 90 game store. Um, Chris oh, man, uh, Chris Sellis is the one that developed that game. And uh, yeah. my, my part in that was... Uh, you know, taking the text, like for the rulebook, for example, I took the text that he gave me and I put it in, you know, a in a legible manner in the rulebook, and then Laura went over it and made it more legible and whatnot. So, you know, I read over that rulebook like five or six times, and I've played Temporal Odyssey, but occasionally there's little minutia of like the way, you know, for example, Chris put some, was I'm just like, okay, I assume that's you know, you made this game, Chris, you know, this is how it's supposed to, supposed to be, this is the order of, you know, operations of what, so I'll kind of trust the people making these games to get things right, so that when I, because when, when things get to me, they should be done, like, when I put text on a card and send it to press, you know, that's the final version, so, you know, for example, Daniel, you know, if he gives me a Battlecon balance for Dev Remastered, for example, when he says it's done, I trust that it's balanced and the word is correct and all that, and I read it for like typos and you know templating, and that's about it. So it's not just my fault if issue, but it's mostly my fault, I guess is the way to put it. All right, so people pitch forks down, pitch forks down, okay? No, no, you can, you can throw them. Like we can we can fix things a lot. So if there's if there's another you know, if there's another print run, we fix things. So. Yeah, I hope Dev Remastered fixes Gaspar. Gaspar. Dev Remastered's is gonna fix a lot of things. You should be worried about it fixing Voco before Gaspar, but. No, 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 Josh, you're wrong. No, no. Because the thing about Voco, Josh, is that he's just weak and he sucks, right? I would love if they balanced him and he's just worse. <laughs> like, he has become such a running joke that he's terrible. The, the balance is just that. We accept that he's bad, and we make like worse than Borneo and Judo. We make him worse. 
as a joke. Yeah, he just has styles that do nothing, and like his finisher just you know eliminates him, and that's it. Hey, Josh, here's a here's a funny thing in case you didn't know. Sure. If all of Voco's styles just said do nothing, he'd be better. Yeah, I could believe that. I don't. I've only played Voco once, but the one time I played him, it was pretty disgusting. So I can definitely believe that statement you just said. Yeah, no, but here's the true facts. Currently, right now, I think Vocal's like, if we got current Vocal from Dev Remastered and put him in the current pool of characters, he'd probably be in the top 10 or top 20. So he's not bad anymore. Well, that's good. Yeah, that's good. No, but I'm talking about fixing Gaspar. Please I fix mean, Gaspar. From what not I know, and again, players. I don't play a lot of BattleCon recently. Leave that to the playtesters because I'm busy doing other things, but... From what I hear, I've heard, it's not so much that Gaspar needs balance, that he needs, like, wording clarification on how his UA works and whatnot. Yeah, I... I, hmm. How's the best way to explain it? It's not that Gaspar is, like, overpowered or underpowered, right? It's more about, like, just Gaspar doesn't work sometimes. (laughs) Sure, he's got weird, like, his clones function in weird ways, and the interactions are really awkward. So, uh, Josh... Aside from getting mad at people for production and stuff, and being the final gatekeeper, and ultimately being the person who is at fault for every single wrong thing that has happened in our rule books mm-hmm. and cards, uh, what else do you do? Um, you know, I uh, that's the main part of my job. I do, you know, like I said, customer service. So if you send a request on our contact form, I'm the guy that gets it and sends it to whoever needs to reply, which is usually myself. Um... I also am involved in testing and design, like initial testing and initial. And so, you know, uh, you're, we do play testing on Discord a lot. Uh, so, but there's an initial step when a game is being developed where we do physical testing now. For, so, for example, Seventh Cross, which is hopefully coming to Kickstarter this year, probably, I would imagine, November ish, maybe October, if we're lucky. Uh, we're on version, like, I want to say 41 of that? 41? Yeah, I believe we're currently on version 41, and since none of the versions have been stable yet, except for version 41, it's been all physical testing. So I've been involved in every single of those 41 versions uh, of Seventh Cross so far. And then once we get a stable version, which is version 41, we will be putting it into our online testing, and then people on Discord can check it out. And that should be relatively soon, probably within the next couple months. Oh, but, man. Uh, yeah, oh, so for man. initial testing, we will basically test things in person until it's good enough and stable enough, and then we will send it to our online testers to hammer everything out. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so um, can you just give me a small sneak peek about 7th Cross who do you usually play? In the seventh cross game, I usually play Selinka because she's a tank, and I like playing tanks and Selinka in general. She's been pretty fun. I mean, mind you, since we've been through forty-one versions, it's pretty much been the same for five characters every version because they don't get far to get the other characters into the game. So it's been like yeah. Selinka, Zolt, uh, who else? Galdred usually for the and last forty-seven versions. So it's kind of just pick. You know, I can't play Sejun. Because she's not playable in Seventh Cross, like she doesn't exceed. So I've been sticking with Slinka. But uh, yeah. So the bigger question here is that you were talking about that you are also involved in design. So what yeah. does that mean? Like, do you make new board games? Is that is that a thing? Um, it depends on the game. Um, for example, uh, you know, we're talking about Seventh Cross. That's kind of Brad's baby. So I'm more involved in design at a minor level. So I'll play just the game and I'll give feedback on, you know, not just balance, but what I might think might make the game better, and some of the things I've, you know, said design has been implemented into the game, and, you know, is, okay, is so in like the current play version. Okay, stuff. Yeah, minor yeah. things, you know, like, maybe you should add this type of card, or, maybe, you know, we should think about, you know, doing exploration or combat in this kind of way. So things will get implemented on a very minor level. Uh, in other games, like Battlecon and Exceed and Millennium Blades, which we'll be talking about a little later, uh, I have or now. been able to, or now, uh, now. been able to, now. 
have a lot more design leverage, so to speak. Uh, for example, that and uh, I designed all of Wardlaw's kit, and uh, most of what you see in his final version is stuff that I created. So oh, therefore, I love you. I love you right now. You're. I, I, I hear people like Wardlaw, so I'm glad. He was a lot of fun to make. Yeah. Which is so this this explains a lot to me because when Brad was on this podcast and started talking about Wardlaw, he was like, you know, I made this character and like he designed the character's like story and all that stuff. He's like, I made this character to be not cool, and I'm like, that's literally the opposite of what this entire kid is, Brad. He is so cool. So that kind of explains it. Are you a wrestling fan, Josh? You have to be. No, I'm actually not at all. I just uh, I, I heard that Wardlaw was coming up for Battlecon, and I really wanted to, you know, I was new at the company at the time, and I was like, come on, Brad, let me show you what I can do. I can make this ward law. And he's like, okay, you make a ward law, and I'll make a ward law, and whichever the rest of the team likes the most, we'll put in for a ward law's kit. And uh, I made ward law as, you know, the version you see now, oh, kind of a grappler that slams you against walls and has some really ridiculous stuff. It was like making you retreat instead of advancing or moving and all that. And Brad made what is now Levian, which is in the future league, if you're familiar with the old playtesting forms, and that character is more of a melee, I guess, brawler, not that, you know, everyone in Battlecon isn't a brawler already, but, yeah, you know, she's less of a throwy character and more of a punchy, really hard character. Um, I also designed uh, Gar for Battlecon to every mastered. Um, she's not... She's not out yet, but like no, no, no. About? But I think I don't know if she's been talking. I know she talked about publicly a little bit, so I think I can talk about her a little bit. Um, I designed her whole kit and uh, also her character art. Um, it's kind of a funny story with Gar actually that I'm pretty sure I can talk about. Um, I wanted to, so I designed Seven also. I designed Seven's character and her kit for BattleCon Online, and uh, it was originally designed for I think Fate. Seven was. And then Brad oh, okay. said, no, her kit is weird, and she'd be better off for online, where the system can handle her, you know, transforming styles better. And I'm like, okay, fine, but I really want a physical Battlecon character. So I just kind of went behind Brad's back and commissioned all of the art for Gar, and, like, her background art and her style nice. arts and all that, and just kind of went to Brad a couple months later and says, hey, look, I've got this character that I made. And all the art's done, so you don't have to spend a dime. Put her in the game. And <laughs> he was kind of a little bit offended that I did that. And then eventually, he, that was about, that was like a year and a half ago. And then I guess eventually he's like, yeah, I guess we have all of that done. So, so we'll put her in. Now she's in Devry Mastered. So yay. Good for that. Strategy worked. Strategy worked. Yeah. Oh my gosh. Okay, okay. So uh, you talked about Battle. Who did you make an Exceed? Uh, I didn't make anyone full Exceed. I designed May Leon's current UA. So everybody that likes May I think she's OP. That's my fault. Uh, please don't ban her. She's not that OP. Uh, we're going to ban her. Really good. We're going to ban her. You already banned, yeah, we're gonna ban what her. was it? Not Lily. Uh, Juno. Juno. Is Juno banned? I guess she is banned, huh? Yeah, she is. No, banned. no, no, not Super Juno. Uh, Alice, Alice is banned. Alice, great. yeah, yeah. I mean, you know why Juno's banned, right? She's she's good. Yes, she's no, really but you good. know why she's good, right? Uh, actually, I don't. I haven't played. I've been, I've been playing her current version, not her old version. So, I see. So here's here's the here's the here's the here's the scoop. Though I think the main reason people, or at least um, we, this ended up deciding to ban Juno was because she could stand up against Alice and that was the only mm, okay. <laughs> he was like okay That's if fair. she can stand up against Alice she's probably broken too <laughs> so sure they were like okay okay so uh last one Millennium Blades yeah so Millennium who, Blades who, um, what? for Millennium Blades in set rotation and the base you know we had so many cards to make uh we had to kind of offset design to the team like Brad did most of it but, uh, you know, we got to throw in ideas for characters and whatnot. And as far as development for mechanics is concerned, you know, we had so much to test. You know, a lot of us got to throw in uh, flavor and mechanics for things that stuck now. Um, as far as current 
Millennium Bytes projects, uh, you all might be familiar with Collusion, which is our next big expansion that we will hopefully be kickstarting either at the end of the year or early 2019. Uh, I am designing all of Collusion from the flavor to the art to the mechanics. I'm doing the whole thing. So if you like or hate Collusion when it comes out, that's all my fault, as usual. Um, oh my gosh. But yeah, I can talk a fault, little bit right? more about it if you'd like. Oh and my then, gosh. Um, so Brad's talked a little bit about Collusion, about the lore behind Collusion, right? Mm -hmm. About how there's two organizations that... Uh, uh, well, I, I don't know their names. The WTF and it's it's the the, the else. Uh, so the lore behind collusion. Yeah, there's these two. Uh, it's it's been like five years since set rotation, the events of set rotation, and sales of Millennium Blades have gone down by like 0.1 percent. So the company behind Millennium Blades starts this uh, uh, only Master Grade campaign or OMG, and uh, they want to kind of dumb down the game to bring in new players so that they get more sales. And this starts like a counter revolution among the old players like Dex and they band together and start the uh, the Bring Back Quality Initiative or BBQ where they want to, you know, keep what's sacred about the game and keep all these ridiculous, complicated effects, you know, because they think that's what made Millennium Blades great. So there's this big faction war that ends up at the end of the story uh, ending with them forming the World Trade Federation or WTF and everybody's happy at the end of that. So that's the okay. plot of Collusion more or less. I know. see. So basically they're, they're struggling. Basically the creators of Millennium Blades want to turn it into Hearthstone mm. and Dex and everybody else wants to keep it Yu-Gi-Oh! Essentially. Yeah, basically, yeah. Oh my gosh. Okay, so I think I think one of the coolest things here is that you got to design a lot of the cards actually and a lot of the visual gags. I Millennium Blades as a game to me is less about actually the game itself and more about just the stuff inside. You know what I mean? It's like yeah. Don't get me wrong, I like playing the game, right? But it's like what makes the game great are the visual gags, the references and all that stuff. So um what what set or what card? Let's just talk about one card. What one specific card from Collusion is your favorite? And like, what's the gag? Explain how it happened. Uh, that will be a cool thing. Oh God, that's there's a lot of cards in Collusion, and mind you, it's still of in course, development, yeah. so there are things that could change. Well, I've laid out every single set in Collusion. Yeah. Okay. You know, when Fop gets to a set and does art, we usually have a powwow, and some things get changed and some things stay. So what I have now might not be what is in the final. Uh, let me look over what we have art for <clears throat> and what we've tested. Uh, let's see. Which one do I like? I mean, like, just think about the first card that jumps into your head. Probably right? when Businessman. I... So we have a we have a Super Zero set that's a bunch of lame superheroes as an expansion set. And uh, Businessman is one of the cards in that set. And the art is him, like... Ripping his business suit open like Superman to reveal another business suit that's blue and red. So inside, yeah, inside. <laughs> so that art was a blast to put on. Um, What's the what 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 else? What else? Oh my god! Let's gosh. see. Uh, I can if you if you'd like, I can just run over the sets real quick and you know give some. I can just go over every set in the game right now if you'd like. Honestly, it shouldn't I mean, take too long. Okay, no, no, no. no it, okay, just give me three, three of your favorites. Yeah, just give me three uh, of okay. the sets, and what's the main theme or joke? Let's see. Um, There's a set called Shoulders of War that people that have been watching the email newsletters might have seen some art from. That's kind of an FPS set with a... You know, it's got... It's got a Team Fortress 2 reference, it's got Duke Nukem, it's got Warhammer, you know, all those, all those shoot bang grim darks, all kinds of stuff, so there's War a lot of fun references Warhammer? there. Warhammer? Hmm? You mean Warframe? No, Warhammer. 40k. Huh, wait, there's... but, oh, shoot stuff, like Marines, okay. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. okay, okay, wait, why is it Shoulders of War? Uh, <laughs> so Fop, oh, wanted a set called Shoulders of War since set rotation. 
and uh, he just wanted, like, he just told, he, we're going to make a set cultural war that's an FPS set, and now is the time that we've been able to make the set. So you'd have to ask Fabio about that one. I'm assuming it's because all of these shooter guys, for some whatever reason, have all buff arms. Something like or that. Something. Yeah. Mm. Or they're all wearing, like, sleeveless wife beater shirts <laughs> or something like that. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Let's see. So uh, next set. Next. What? Wait. Do you know the main mechanic for the set? Uh, that set. Let me see. Currently, there's not a huge mechanic. Hang on. There's a lot of clashing, of course, because you know there's a lot of fighting and shoot. Uh, so I guess it's a clash set. It's okay. So if you like clashing, you're it's gonna have a lot set. of cool clash tools in there. Cool. Uh, there's another. Okay. There's a next premium one. set uh, called Faster, which is the sequel to Fast from Set Rotation. So it's more action movie parodies and whatnot. Got can a... I can I recommend can mm. I recommend a card? All oh, the art's done, but sure, go ahead. Dang. Okay. Well, I was gonna say like you should put Tracy Chapman in there or something. Oh, we could. Yeah. Like, yeah. We were like, planning on doing a third card. A fast set called Fast Three eventually, so we could put that. Oh in my god. One. Probably. Oh wait, is that the set? Is that the set with Vin Van Diesel? Yes, yes. In Faster it? is the set with Van Diesel. If you've seen or done Fabio's Deviant Art, he's the, posted it up. It's great. If you haven't seen it, go look at it. The the art for it is nightmare inducing to say the least. All right, and last set is. Uh, last set. Let's see. Uh oh, probably uh. So there's a set, a uh, master set called Core Set Two which is just a bunch of individual cards that you would normally find in core, but is now in a its own set. So you have that, things like you it. have another Jace, uh, another Magic Jace card. Uh, oh, but have... is it actually different? Or is yeah, it yeah, a it's, it's, an, it's apparently you have a different Jace card that exists. It's called Chase Money Adept. I hate it. I hate uh, there's, it so uh, much. There's another Sleeves, and that's at Double Deck Protectors. There's a, a goose card to play off all your duck cards. There's a millennial accessory that is not a millennium accessory. I see. Is it a phone? Uh, yeah, it a it's phone. Going to, yes, it's going to be a phone. Ah, oh, thank lord. The nail on the head. There's a triple shark. There's a mono shark. Because people like the sharks. Why? <laughs> so you have two joke cards based on the single double shark. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Oh no! Okay, and a few other things uh, as well. And that's I'm assuming that, that the main mechanic there. I'm assuming the main mechanic there is just, um, like, it's there's no mechanic. You're just it's just a meme set. Exactly. Like, uh, you know, uh, the, the, if if I were to give a mechanical theme to it, it's that there's a lot of accessories in it. So, you know, yeah, it has a lot of random cards that you would find in core in a set. So if you need like an accessory or just a general good card, you'll find it in core set too. Uh, the other interesting thing about Corset 2 is that instead of the standard card distribution of, like, you know, three of a common, two of an uncommon, one of a rare, it's just one of every card. So each card you will only get one of in that set. So it's a it's a standard 12-card set, but each card only appears once. So. Oh, so it's like every card's a rare. Basically, yeah, exactly. Just like in Corset, you know, you're only going to find one copy of everything except for a few cards. So, yeah. Except for a, quite a few cards, yeah. Mm-hmm. Oh, I like that. I like that. So it's a, you know what? I said like Core Set 2 is a meme set, but then I realized that every card, every set in Millennium Blades is a meme set. So. Kind of, yeah. What do you mean kind of? Josh, Josh, don't lie to me. No, 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 I'm not. You you want to know why I say kind of? I say kind of because it's a 50 page BGG thread right now that's uh, talk about references in Millennium Blades and there are people... Like, to this day, that are still trying to find references on cards that don't have references. Fun fact, most cards in Core are not references. They're just dudes that we put on cards. I, I, I do find it hilarious that people are, like, trying to find references on every single card in Millennium Blades. Because that is not the case. So, not everything you see is a reference. Just most things. I see, yeah. Uh, like, 90% of the things. Mm. I'm pretty sure, though, that, like, every single of the rare core set cards is is a reference, right? I believe so, for the most part. Yeah, because if they're a rare core set card, that means they're, like, a parody of a boss monster or boss card in yeah, another like CCG. Yeah, like or the Jace parody, yeah, yeah. 
Yeah, wait. Bernizard's Pokemon, then there's like Exaltius, and there's like Chase the Bryce sculptor, and then <laughs> there's um there's the Legend of the Five Rings guy, Matsuda or something, whatever. Oh yeah, Matsu the Butcher, yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, 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 yeah. Matsu the Butch bo- Butcher. Uh man, I'm miss I'm probably missing a lot. Uh, J Dog Haxon, yep. I think, is there. Netrunner, yep, yep. Yep, 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 yep. Uh is there anything else? Uh, from that one, I think you hit all of them offhand. Wow, but there's there's so many cards in Millennium Blade. It's hard to keep track. Honestly, that's true. All that's right, funny. okay. So that pretty much does it for the pipeline. Where Josh talks about who he is, what he does. So now, whenever you have your customer service concerns, or whenever there's something wrong in the rule book, or whenever something gets shipped and it's wrong, it's all his fault. Uh, uh in the comments section, please type "It's all Josh's fault." Uh, in the comment section down below, and we'll see how that goes. All right, so let's move on to the next segment, and probably the last segment for this episode, since we're running a bit long. 99 Questions, where Josh and I absorb your questions through your cranium, shove it back into your throat, and hopefully that produces some answers that are amicable to both of us. Josh, are you ready to answer some of these questions? Sure, shoot. All right. Josh, when is the Unleashed Kickstarter going to start? Probably the end of August, hopefully. Or early September. Oh. This this year. For sure. I love, I love how you slowly degraded your promise. You're like, it's end of August. Maybe start of September. Mm, this year? I mean, <laughs> you slowly grew less and less confident <laughs> with your answer. Well, All we right. can never be sure. You know, with DCO coming up, you know, we want to make sure we give a lot of... We don't want to say anything too certain because we don't know, you know, how that launch is going to go, so... Yeah, that's fair. All right. Can you give an update on the new Millennium Blades expansion? Hmm. Yeah, it's it's happening. Uh, it's current development, or what we would call development, and Fabio's working on the art. Uh, I am working on hammering out all of the mechanics. Uh, we had a slew of testing a couple months ago, but we had to postpone it for 7th Cross, so we should be getting back into testing soon. So hopefully, by the end of the year, uh, all you Discord playtesters should have all of Collusion in your hands digitally to check yeah. out. Please play it on Tabletop Sim, because it's like, I, I'm remiss of all the trees that will die if people try to print and play this again. Yeah, it's a I, I, yeah. We're definitely not expect one to print out all of collusion and test it. So you know, <laughs> use your computers, ladies and gentlemen. Yes, ladies and gentlemen, and everybody in between and outside. Okay, last question: What's the status of Pixel Tactics Mobile? Uh, hmm. I think this is more of a me question. Probably, that's not exactly a project I'm I'm working on. I know yeah. it's happening. I know it's in in testing and should be going into open beta very soon but i've heard that for the last four months so yeah you know, so i'm actually l- i'm lead balancing on it so. oh okay oh, great yeah, no. huh. yay therefore i should know a lot about this stuff right um, so tell us when it's coming out it's tomorrow right never <laughs> just kidding no um the thing about the production of pto or Pixel Tactics Online P- Pixel Tactics Mobile whatever you want to call it um the thing about pto is that it is basically really contingent on BCO. Um, and sure. not that like if BCO flops, it's not going to come out or whatever, right? It's more along the lines of like, Brad really wants BCO to finally come out because, you know, it's been promised to backers for forever, right? Of course, um, yeah. And so a lot of the time of the programmers and the dev team has been placed on BCO in case people weren't cognizant of this fact. Uh, the developer for BCO is the same person who does the development for PTO. So, you know, you can't split them two ways. Once Cameron's working on one thing, he can't work on the other, right? So, because a lot of Cameron's time has been BCO, in case that hasn't been abundantly clear to everyone, um, he can't work on PTO. Therefore, (laughs) nothing's happening right now. Um, Currently, what's happening, at least on my end, is... Cameron's developing PTO version 2, which is an architecture. Um, basically, the way PTO kind of works right now is that all the cards are hard-coded into the game, which is a no-no, because it means that every time we change a card, we have to release a new patch. Hmm. And that's not a good thing. Um, the way BCO works right now is that there's this cool server where all the cards are kind of like hosted. 
and the games pull from that or something so that they know what the cards do, which means that if we want to change a card, we don't necessarily have to patch everything when we change a card. Um, so Cameron wants to do that for PTO, especially for PTO, because PTO is a CCG, unlike BCO. So PTO has way more cards. PTO has way more interactions. And like a changing one card might affect 20 different other cards in the set. So um, yeah, that might be a, that's a more useful function in PTO. Aside from that, I've just been going around and you know asking people to help me make uh, broken cancer decks, like because we're in that stage of development, wherein basically I'm trying to identify every single piece of cancer that exists within the current system. And very recently, around two weeks ago, before I got sick with the flu. Um, Bane of Pixels made a cancer deck. I hate it. I hate it so much. I, I wish they didn't make it, but they did. So that's that. Um, uh, but it's a cool deck. It's a, um, what do you call it? It's a deck that basically you, you run a leader who can only take four damage per instance. Like the highest amount of damage he can take at the time is four. Mm -hmm. And then he just filled the deck with cards that heal for more than four. Oh, okay. Yeah. That's, that sounds pretty disgusting. Yeah, and then uh, what What else? It's like, it's basically the ultimate grinder deck because not only do you only take four damage at a time, he heals and then he has a bunch of cards that say like, duplicate a card in your hand or duplicate a card in the field and put it into your hand. So basically he never runs out of cards. So basically the entire strat is just, I will never die and you can't do anything about it. And I'm just going to wait for you to run out of cards. Um, so that's pretty cancerous uh, on multiple levels actually, not just because like, you know, it's impossible to kill the guy. But also because um, basically when you're designing a, a video game, right, you want there to be a specific playtime, right? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, that deck kind of throws the ideal playtime into the window because mm. it's like the ideal playtime is probably 10 to 15 to 20 minutes. That deck wins after 40 minutes. Yeah, it's just so. awful in every sense of the word. Exactly. So it's not only cancerous in terms of like it being balanced or not. It's also cancerous in terms of the play experience. So anyway, that's that. So it's still in development. And, you know, like Josh says, hopefully it comes out. <laughs> It'll come out. It just might take a bit. Yeah. But you'll see it. Yeah, you'll see it. I mean, like, I still post updates about it on social media. And, you know, we still have our Discord. So if you guys want to, you know, help me, like, come up with more cancer, please. So... Um, I'd like to keep going, Josh. I really would, but we're reaching time, and I think it's about time that we get back to work. Well, I need to get to work, and you probably need to get home. Yeah, I'm, my work is over for the day after this podcast, so... Yeah, yeah, uh, invite me back sometime. I'd love to do it again. It's fun. Yeah, you were great. You, you know, you, you were worried about your first time, but you did great. Way better than a few of our other, like, friends. So, oh, I appreciate the compliment. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So you did great. So as much as I'd like to keep going, thank you so much for listening to this episode of Level Cap Podcast. And if you guys have any comments, questions, or suggestions, please put them in the comment section down below, and we will be getting to them as soon as we can. Now, without much else to say, as usual, it's been me, your host, Marco De Santos, also known as Mechanic Rick, and with me has been my wonderful co-host. Uh, uh, I'm Josh. All right. And we hope that you all enjoyed this wonderful episode. Don't forget your special action. And thank you, Roll of Indians. Thank you, and good night. Thank you. Happy gaming. Thank you.